All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to NYU virtually. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, my name is Liam Dean Johnson, and I am an Associate Director of Customer Service Operations and Admissions here at NYU. And I'm looking forward to sharing more information about NYU with you today. So we'll be talking, of course, a little bit about the school itself, but mostly we'll actually be talking about the college application as a whole entity. This thing that is incredibly stressful, I know causes many sleepless nights for many of us. Um, and we're really excited to kind of break that down a little bit, right? Um, talk about some things uh, that you may not know about it or that you may want some more clarification on. So before we get started, I would like to share a couple of housekeeping items. So please note that all attendees will be muted throughout the duration of the webinar. And if you're interested in asking questions, just use the Q&A function right at the bottom of your screen. So listen carefully throughout the presentation. I'll hopefully be answering a lot of the questions that might come up because we'll likely answer your question at some point. But if it's not answered as we get towards the end of the session, feel free to submit your question through the Q&A box. I have some of my amazing fellow staff members in the admissions team answering your questions behind the scenes. So if for some reason, I do get disconnected because we all know that can happen plenty in this Zoom land. One of our uh, staff members will step in on my behalf. And of course, if there's questions that we are unable to answer during the webinar, whether in person or through the Q&A, um, we will provide contact information at the end, as I'm sure you've been seeing throughout the day so far, so you can reach out to us anytime. We're really here for you as a resource in this process. All right, now let's get started. We would love to hear from you uh, a little bit about you, right? Um, so what stage of the process are you in when it comes to college applications? Have you started your college search? So a poll should pop up and you can tell us whether you've been researching, checking out some schools, or if you're still in the planning phase, right? You're thinking about it, planning for it, but it hasn't quite kicked off yet. And I have a feeling the answer is going to be yes for most of you since you're here today. All right, I'll give it a moment. Okay, 3% of you were brave enough to say you haven't even started your college search as you're at this NYU presentation. So I'm going to move you to the 97%. Um, but it's really great that many of you are taking that initiative to get that underway. Of course, many of you may be further along than others. Some of you may have started the common application. Others may not have even seen what it looks like. So that is the point of today's session. Today's session is really going to be all about navigating the college application process. So we recognize that there is a lot of anxiety and uncertainty that revolves around the college admissions process, especially this year, in the middle of the many um, sort of impacts of the pandemic that we're all feeling. But our goal is that you'll leave this session really equipped with the tools and the information that will help you feel comfortable and confident applying to college. But before we dive in, I wanted to take a moment to acknowledge that situation right now that we are all living through. All of our lives have been disrupted by the COVID-19 pandemic, and more than anything, we hope you and your loved ones are safe and healthy. The college admissions process, as I mentioned, can be stressful enough as it is without the addition of a global pandemic that introduces so many other factors to consider questions and obligations. And we really want to ensure that you uh, want to rather assure you that our entire community is here to support you as you embark on this college admissions journey. At NYU, for our part, the well-being of our students has been the number one priority. And despite some of the uncertainty and the obstacles that we continue to face, I've been blown away by the dedication, the creativity, the way that they have continued to thrive in the face um, of this pandemic. So we've really harnessed the power of our global network, allowing both coursework and daily operations to continue remotely, and now at most of our locations, also in person. So back to the topic at hand, here's an overview of what we're going to cover in this session today. So first we'll walk you through the different sections of the common application. Then we'll dive deeper into the activities section itself, letters of recommendation and essays. We'll then spend time talking about the admissions timeline and financial aid. So basically what to do and when to do it um, and talk through some important deadlines that are also a bit more specific to NYU. And then at the end, we'll have time to answer some of your questions live but before we dive in, we wanted to share a short video with you that gives you a great overview of how to apply to NYU using the Common Application. We know applying to college can be confusing and even a bit stressful. So at NYU, we try to make it as easy as possible. Here's what you need to know. NYU uses the Common Application. 
which allows you to submit applications to multiple universities pretty efficiently. You can create your common application account anytime. It's a good idea to get started early so you have time to prepare. To apply to NYU, here are the basics. Head on over to commonapp.org and set up your account. You'll need to complete the Common App tab with information that will be sent to every college you apply to. Once you're logged in, go to the College Search tab to add NYU to your My Colleges list. You'll need to do that for every college you're interested in, but no matter which of our undergraduate divisions you're applying to, you only need to do that once for NYU. Now you can see our college-specific questions. Our application asks essentially two questions. Which division of the university are you applying to? And why NYU? We'll talk more about that later. We'll need official transcripts from any schools you attended, one teacher or instructor evaluation, and for first-year applicants, your common application school report. NYU is test flexible, which means our testing policy is designed to help you put your best foot forward. Check out the standardized tests page on our website to choose the best option for you. Finally, certain majors have additional requirements, so check our website to make sure you've covered everything. Applicants to artistic programs are encouraged to submit their applications a month before our deadlines to get started on the audition or portfolio process. Now you may need some advice, so here are the top two things we want applicants to know. First, know your deadlines. NYU offers two rounds of early decision for students who are sure that NYU is their first choice and regular decision, which has a January 5th deadline. For transfer students, some of our majors only take new students for the fall, so check your department-specific website. Second point of advice, do your research. NYU requires that you submit a short response to one question, why NYU? This is one of the most important parts of the NYU application. We love it here, and we want to know why you will too. There's no right answer, but we want to know that you've done some research and found something that draws you to NYU that you couldn't find anywhere else. Once you press submit, our admissions counselors get to work looking for strong academic performance and a complete picture of who you are and what you would bring to our community. We know that's a lot to take in, but we're here to help. Please contact us if you have any questions throughout the process. All right, so hopefully that video was a helpful introduction to the Common App, and I do want to underscore that piece at the end, right? Contact us if you have any questions about the Common Application, about the NYU portion of it, because we really are here as a resource to you. But before we dive a little bit deeper into the application itself, let's do another poll. So for those of you that have started, which part of the Common Application do you find the most challenging or the most stressful? It's taking up the most space in your mind right now. Is it the activities section, asking for letters of recommendation, the essays, or just all of it? Take a moment to lock in your answers. All right, let's see. Okay, so the vast majority of you are saying the essay. Lucky for you, we'll spend a ton of time talking about that today. It was definitely the most stressful part for me, but we've got representation for all of this, right? Um, it can be really hard to sort of put down who you are on paper, whether in essay form or in short answer form or in, in the form of an activity section. So we're gonna spend a lot of uh, today really talking about the kind of strategies you can use to help tell your story and have that make sense to an admissions committee. But before we get there, let's make sure you're actually familiar with the interface of the Common App itself. So we're obviously more excited about reading your interest, sorry, your essays to learn more about your interest in NYU. But there are some basics, like basic basics to get right first. So the first thing that you're going to do before you even create your Common App account, double check your email. Is it something you want an admissions counselor to see and be emailing you at maybe every week? Does it sound professional? Remember that it really is something where you are representing yourself through the common application. So you want to make sure that that email address makes sense, that it is related to you, that you are checking it regularly. 
If I had used my first email address ever, uh, which borrowed a phrase about a cat from a, a movie called Homeward Bound that maybe none of you have seen, um, it would not have been appropriate <laughs> to put on my common application. It would have been okay. Um, but I ended up going with a pretty straightforward Liam Dean Johnson um, email address, right? To really uh, demonstrate that I was thinking seriously about this college application process. When filling out your profile information as well, you want to keep in mind that whatever you write here shows up on your application exactly how you wrote it here, from your name to your email address. So double check that spelling because that's how we'll be getting in touch with you. Capitalization matters, spelling matters. If you spell your name wrong here or your preferred name wrong, that's what's going to show up on your acceptance letter. So you want to make sure you have that memento for your family to keep for generations to come of when you got into NYU and you want your name to be spelled correctly correctly on it. So this all kind of sounds simple, but it really is about making sure that the application looks professional and that we can get in touch with you appropriately. You'll also notice at the top of the screen here, there are five main sections of the Common App that you'll see listed. Each section of um, the Common App has video tutorials along the side, as you can see in the upper right hand corner here. So you can also get tips as you go along, right? So if something looks confusing on a particular page, they may actually have resources that are already in place to kind of help you figure that out. And this page shows up all the components that make up the common part of the common app, meaning everything you fill out under that gray common app tab that you see at the top goes to every school you're applying to. So don't write specifically about NYU in here. This is the place where you should be telling us about who you are, broadly speaking. Um, so the left sidebar will show you those sections, and each section will have a number of subsections that you also need to com uh, complete. You'll also notice on this page that you can request a fee waiver when you're applying to the schools through the Common App. So if an application fee does present a financial hardship for your family, you can request one by reaching out to many of the colleges that you're applying to. Many of them will actually be more accommodating than you think, so it never hurts to ask. And that's one of the most common things that I want to dispel the myth about. If you need something from a college, make sure to be asking for it. Ask for those resources. You'll also notice that under the education section of the Common App here, you can list any community-based organizations that you've worked with throughout high school. So some colleges do have relationships with existing organizations, so it's a good idea to list them if you have been affiliated with them. And that could be, you know, an after-school program, it could be a community-based organization that helps with college prep, etc. All of that is really helpful to list here. You may also have more specific questions that come up as you're filling out the application because there are some tricky parts to navigate, like what to enter if only one parent or guardian is in the picture, or what the different fee waiver options actually mean because they can be confusing and overlapping, or how to answer the citizenship status question if you hold multiple citizenships or if you're undocumented. And all of that is stuff that we can help with, but also that you can reach out to the Common App for advice on. Um, but for this presentation, we'll focus on the activity and the writing sections, as well as how to ask for letters of rec. So on the next slide, you'll see a snapshot of the activity section itself. Common App lets you add up to 10 activities. Um, but of course, many of you have done more than that. Many of you might have narrowed your focus and done less than that that are really deep and intense to you. Um, and some schools may ask for this to be listed separately on a resume or activity sheet, but most will not. Most will just be asking you to put what you've been doing into this activity section of the Common App. Activities, of course, I think is important to define, right? What is an activity? It's not what you're just doing in school. It's not a leadership opportunity in a club. It's not just those traditional involvements, though they absolutely are the great things to put in here. Think about other things as well, like part-time jobs, family responsibilities, and so on. We really wanna know about the full picture of your life. So if you're recording an album in your basement, tell us about it. If you've been teaching yourself how to speak Lithuanian, tell us about it. All of that is stuff that really helps us, you know, understand who you are more broadly speaking. Um, and it also helps us imagine what kind of community member you'll be on campus and what you'll bring to NYU or the other schools you're applying to. So now that you're thinking about what kinds of activities you should include in your application, let's talk about some tips to really make sure that your application stands out and pops when it comes across our desk. 
So the first thing that you want to do is think about how you order them, right? So whether you have 10 activities or three activities, we're reading a lot of activity sections. So it helps when we see an activity section where a student has put some thought into how it flows. So start with the most impressive. Start with the thing that you do not want an admissions counselor to miss, right? Um, if there's something you're really proud of, it makes sense to put it right off the top of your activity list. Don't wait to tell us that you're an Olympic gold medalist until your eighth or ninth achievement, right? Um, it helps for us to understand how you prioritize your activities and how you really make sense of them as well. It can also be helpful um, if you don't really have a hierarchy to your activities and how important they were to you to think about grouping similar activities, because that also gives us a visual signpost. So maybe all of your community service uh, efforts are clustered together. Maybe all of your athletic achievements are clustered together. That is always helpful as well in terms of organizing your thoughts here. Also, I know that, you know, Acronyms are easy to use, especially when you only have 100, 150 characters for each of these descriptions. And I might know some of those acronyms. I might know about Model UN, for example. I do know about Model UN. Um, but there are acronyms that are specific to your schools, to your communities, that we might not actually you know, understand. So make sure that if you are using an acronym that you spell it out the first time. So my recommendation is always to put the full name in the title of the activity, um, as well as you know, what acronym you'll be using. And then if you need to, use the acronym in the description. It's also OK if you don't have measurable outcomes for all of your activities, right? Um, but if you're the leader of a group or another community group, think about what you've accomplished over your involvement. Um, think about really how you participated and how that club or group was impacted, or rather, how you impacted your community. Um, all of that is really helpful to summarize in the description. So we're not just seeing, hey, they were a member of the dance club. What did the dance club do? What were they a part? What kind of dance? I'm excited to know that. Uh, so that detail is where that will really come in. Also make sure you watch your spelling and grammar. This is critical. We see so many times where students have poured so much time and effort into the essays and it's incredibly polished. They seem like an incredible writer. And then we get to the activity section and everything's in lowercase. You know, there are spaces where they shouldn't be. Um, that it's really easy to make simple mistakes on your activity sheet. So make sure that you are keeping that level of writing consistent across the full application. And lastly, it may seem like a great idea now to join 35 new clubs your senior year, but it's not. While multiple activities definitely give us some information about you and what you're excited about, we're also looking at sustained commitment across time, right? So don't just join a club for the sake of joining a club. Don't just take on an opportunity for the sake of doing it. Really think about what you're passionate about um, and how you're communicating that to a college, because that is what we're interested in, what really makes you tick. All right, so that's the activity section. If you do have questions about it, feel free to pop them in the Q&A box. But now let's transition to talking a little bit about letters of recommendation. And the purpose of letters of recommendation for us is really that they often confirm details presented in other parts of the application, or they're adding some insight that we wouldn't have been able to capture elsewhere. So for that reason, it's important to be thoughtful when asking about letters of recommendation and who you're asking and when you're asking them. So this may sound like an obvious tip, but it matters really less about the title of the person writing the letter and much more about the depth of their interactions with you. So you want someone who knows you ideally, who is from the past couple of years to really give us a sense of, you know, who you are currently and what you're passionate about. You know, it's great that your second grade teacher loved you. I loved my second grade teacher, but it's unlikely that they're going to add much insight as to how you'd be on a college campus, right? Because hopefully we've all matured a little bit in that decade between second grade and now. So what we're really looking for here is that you choose someone who can speak to your character, um, whether that's a teacher who you got close with, a teacher whose class you maybe struggled in, but pushed yourself and that um, is something that sheds light on how resilient you are or how you overcome challenges. All of that is giving us context for what kind of person you'll be on our campus. But it also takes time to write strong letters of recommendation. So you're wanna, going to want to give your counselor and your teachers plenty of time to write a strong letter on your behalf. The same way you want to present a good picture of yourself in the application, you want your recommender to be able to do the same. So you don't want them to be thinking, hey, this person only asked me one week ago, and now I'm annoyed with them as I'm writing this letter of recommendation. 
don't have that sort of cloud hanging over it, right? Really make sure that you are giving them enough time to write the letter of recommendation, that you're following up if they still need to submit, and then also providing a heartfelt thank you when they're done. And a good tip when you're actually asking someone is to tell them why you want them to write the letter. So, hey, I loved your class and think I did a lot of great work in it. My essay is about soccer and you were my coach. So I think you're going to be able to, you know, shed some additional light on the application. Um, all of those are valid reasons to ask a particular person, but it's always helpful as a recommender to know why you're being asked. So make sure you include that when you are reaching out. All right. So that covers the letter of recommendation section for the few percent of you that were worried about that. But now let's dive into the thing that many of you are the most anxious about, the writing components of the application. So this was 100% the most stressful part of the application process when I was applying, but it's also the part, ironically, that I love the most now, being able to read your essays uh, and get a sense of who you are and what makes you tick and a little bit of a window into your lives, right, outside of the academic information that we see elsewhere. So this is really where you get to take that application into your own hands and tell your own story. And it's also where we get to learn really who, um, who you are and what kind of person um, you're going to be when you interact with our community as well. So uh, in terms of the technical piece in the Common App, some colleges will require you to complete the main Common App essay, which we'll talk a bit more about in a second, while others will not. So the writing section of the Common App is where all this happens, one of those side tabs like we talked about. And the writing section is going to pull from the schools that you've added to my colleges and tell you which schools actually require that essay. So you'll see here it is required for NYU. And this is separate from the supplement or member questions that individual colleges and universities might ask you to complete uh, in their sort of school specific section. Because this essay goes to multiple schools, and just like the main sort of biographical information uh, part of the application, it's really not an appropriate time to talk about a specific school you're applying to, a specific major. Save that for the supplement and keep this general, uh, or not general, specific to you, um, but don't touch on any schools in here. We do want to know, of course, what you love about the colleges you're applying to, but this main essay is purely for us to get to know you better. So here are all the essay prompts for the upcoming year. It doesn't matter which essay you choose, and most of the topics tend to be broad enough that you can pretty much write about whatever you want. That being said, if you are choosing a topic other than that last one, which is basically just topic of your choice, make sure that you actually answer the question. So for example, if you're choosing the third one, right? Reflect on a time where you questioned or challenged a belief or idea. What prompted your thinking? What was the outcome? You really wanna make sure that there's like a learning and growing moment in there, right? There needs to be a challenge or that complication if we're talking traditional story structure, um, but there also needs to be a resolution, an outcome, what you learned from it, how you grew. It doesn't need to be entirely resolved and that applies to any stories you're telling or any essays you're writing, but it should give us a sense of your thinking process um, and shouldn't simply narrate something that happened to you. It should be about, you know, how you grew from it, how you navigated a situation. It should always come back to who you are. And the essay should ultimately be one that is true to you, right, for that reason. So if you care about social justice, you can write about social justice. If you're funny, you can be funny. If you're not that funny, the college essay is probably not the best time to start. Um, but it really is a place for us to get to know you and get to know your writing. So don't make it a resume or a brag sheet. Um, save that for the activities section, save that for your transcripts. Feel free to be really vulnerable and honest. And we're looking for you to tell us who you are and what you care about in whatever form works best for you to tell your story. And whatever form that is, your essay is going to end up in this very humble looking box. Um, so you should always write it in a separate document, whether a Word document or a Google Doc, to make sure you don't lose it. Because as we all know, in this virtual world, sometimes you'll type things into a box and you will never see them again. Um, but sometimes when you copy the text over into this uh, sort of essay submission box as well, the formatting might be off. So that's important to remember, right? However many beautiful spaces and paragraphs and you know um, diacritics or special characters you input into your essay, they might not actually translate over into this doc. So make sure that when you are sort of looking at this box after you've pasted your essay into it, you're really checking that everything made it over um, and that what the admissions officer is actually going to see matches what you want them to see. 
It also always helps to break your essay up. Dense blocks of text are typically harder for us to read. So if you're writing your essay in one paragraph, it can often obscure some of the most important points you're making. So think about using paragraph breaks, shorter paragraphs, maybe some dialogue or headings to also help break up how um, it appears on our pages. And according to our poll results from earlier, the essay was the most stressful bit. And I think a lot of that is probably not just about the writing process, right? Many of you have written essays before, all of you have written an essay before, and I know you know how to do it. The stressful part, at least for me, and I, I could presume for many of you, is that the anxiety really comes from having to tell your story and put it in 600 words, roughly, 650, I think. Um, so let's talk about it. So if you take nothing else away from this portion, and I hope I've stressed this enough, we hope that you'll remember that your essay should be about you. So how do you tell your story? First, maybe think about the conversations you're having with the people around you every day. We're always telling stories, whether it's about something exciting that happened to us, um, something crazy that happened to us on the subway, or something funny or ironic. Storytelling is innate, right? But when it comes to telling a story about ourselves and putting it down on paper, that's when many of us get writer's block. So how do you overcome that? The first step is really going to be deciding on your message. When it comes to your essay, you do not and should not tell me everything that has ever happened to you in your life. One message or takeaway is more than enough. Well, it's not more than enough. You do need at least one message or takeaway, but one is enough. So think about what you want that to be, right? And identify what it is that you're trying to communicate, communicate to the people who don't know you who are reading it. So having that sort of end goal in mind is really helpful because then we also better understand what you're going for. Then you wanna make sure that you structure your story. And there's a lot of ways that you can do this. So one way to think about structure is to draw inspiration from some of our favorite stories, right? Some of the earlier stories that we get to know, popular fairy tales. So if you think about Cinderella, right? Um, in part one, you want to introduce yourself, of course, you are the protagonist always, and any supporting characters. You wanna give uh, background and establish some context. So in Cinderella, she, of course, is introduced, and then she goes to live with her evil stepmother and her jealous stepsisters. Eventually, she meets her fairy godmother, goes to a ball, meets a prince, all these things that we just don't get to do these days, who falls in love with her. Um, so you're introducing all the main characters, right? Really setting up that storyline. But of course, any good story has a moment of conflict or a moment of tension. So in Cinderella, the spell wears off and the prince wants to find out who she is. So make sure that you are introducing um, some kind of conflict. It doesn't need to be an intense conflict. It could just be a moment where you started thinking differently, but that's what keeps an essay or a personal narrative really interesting to us. And then you wanna of course conclude by talking about how the conflict was resolved or if there was a lesson learned or as we talked about, a takeaway from it. So um, in Cinderella, the conflict gets resolved when the shoe fits her and the, she and the prince live happily ever after. So it doesn't have to be that complicated um, and it definitely doesn't need to have that many characters <laughs> or people uh, that are relevant to it. It could just be about you and your love of researching the solar system. And that's just one way that you could choose to structure your essay. It can also take many other forms that can incorporate, but shouldn't just be dialogue or poetry, lyrics, whatever really means something to you and that will help you get your point across. But no matter what, you always want to come back to the core, which is communicating the facts, right? The who, the what, when, where, why, and how. Something that you're relating in this story has happened to you at some point, that you've been a part of at some point. We want to understand the world in which that happened, so your world. And at the end of the day, we're looking to learn about you. So start with what you want us to know. Know what you want us to walk away with knowing about you and tell a story that illustrates that. But no matter how you choose to structure it, no one is better at telling it than you. So whenever you start to feel insecure about your writing or writing this essay, remember that the essay that you write about yourself is the best essay that anyone could write about you because you are your best uh, advocate. And this also doesn't have to be your traditional English class essay. The five paragraph format works for some, but don't feel constrained. You don't need to have intro, body, 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 conclusion. And don't focus on so much on making it so different that I don't learn anything about you. This is really kind of the only opportunity to share your story to NYU. Since we don't offer interviews, we're really looking at what you're putting in your personal narrative here, as well as what you're telling us in the supplement about what you're interested in. 
As always, you should keep this very centered on yourself. Um, if you're writing about your relationship with your grandma, make sure that you are the protagonist, not your grandma, because we can't admit her. She didn't submit an application. So we want the story at the end of the day to come back to you, to come back to what you've learned, who you are, um, and other people can be in service of that, in support of that in the essay, but they shouldn't be the main character. And of course, making sure you're connecting it to who you are now is really critical. So stories from the past, connect it to the future, connect it to who you've become. Make sure you um, sort of provide that structure for us so that we're not just reading about 10 year old you. This is also, as I mentioned, the general college essay. So make sure to avoid any references to specific institutions. And there's also often and sometimes uh, a fine line between being personal in this essay and being too personal. Right, so any essays about bodily functions, guarantee you none of our admissions counselors want to read that <laughs> unless you do it in an incredibly well written and maybe slightly poetic way. And then finally, formatting matters. So make sure that your essay is polished, that it's easy to read. And like, uh, like I mentioned once again, making sure that everything that you want us to communicate from the content to the structure of it gets copied over into that box. So what you think you're submitting is what we're seeing. So I hope that gives you some context for how to write the essay. I believe in you all because I know you have plenty of stories that you've told about your life, plenty of things um, that you know that define you. And those are the pieces that you can weave into this narrative. But this is the perfect time, I think, for our last poll of the session, uh, so I can get to hear a little bit more about you. In your opinion, what part of the application process holds the most weight in determining whether or not you will get in? Is it the activities section? Is it the letters of recommendation? Is it the essay? Or are all parts considered equally? And this is about you. So let us know what you think, and then we'll see what an admissions counselor thinks. All right, okay, so it looks like half of you are saying the essay is the thing that will determine what, whether or not you'll get in the most. Almost half of you are saying all parts are considered equally. And then a couple of you are also saying the activities section, the letters of recommendation are really what we're focusing on. And the answer is kind of all of you are right and all of you are wrong because there is nothing that holds the most weight in determining whether or not you'll get in, right? So we don't have a magical formula where we plug and say, uh, plug and play saying 20% of the activities section, 15% of letters of recommendation, 30% of the essay. What we're really doing when we're looking at an application is bringing everything we learn from all of these sections into a coherent picture about who you are. So I guess all parts are weighted equally in some respect in that we care about all of the parts of the application, um, but there's no one thing that's determining whether or not you're getting into a particular college. So when you're thinking about the essay, remember it's just one puzzle piece. It's one more opportunity to tell your story and tell us who you are, rather than you know the most stressful thing that we're only looking at and that will make or break your application. Never think of it that way because that will only lead you to stress out further and feel even more of that writer's block being able to tell us about yourself. So now that we've explored all the different sections of the application, let's talk about the process itself and some next steps. So for any juniors that are joining us today, getting that early start, we have a special timeline for you since you're further out than the seniors who are applying right now. So since it's too early for you to actually submit an application, the focus uh, for you is really to start researching the schools that might be a good fit for you. And events like this are a great start and many schools are offering them online now, which is great and makes things a lot more flexible. Um, so really make sure you're thinking about what could feel like a good home for you. This could be in the form of campus visits, meeting reps at college fairs online and so on. And then if you're thinking about applying to an artistic program like drama or studio art, this is a great time to start getting your materials together. Um, start thinking about what you'd like to show uh, a particular artistic department or faculty. Also, if you have a college counselor or advisor at your school, it is never too early to set up a meeting with them to uh, talk you through sort of navigating that process. They'll help you narrow down that list that you've begun looking at in terms of colleges and universities and make sure you're continuing that research and also figuring out if you need to take any tests. A lot of schools do require standardized tests, though many of us uh, have put that on hold for now and are test optional due to the impacts of COVID-19. Um, but make sure that if you're a junior, you're at least thinking ahead far enough in case those um, you know, accommodations are not in place by the time you get to apply. 
And then of course, during the summer before your senior year, it's helpful to start doing those tours, um, start interviewing with admissions counselors and so on. And of course, begin writing your essay. So as we transition to senior year, hopefully you were able to do a lot of that groundwork during your junior year, but if you weren't, that's okay. Um, in your senior year, you still have time. So you'll wanna finalize that list of schools that you're applying to, meet with your college counselor to help you with this, to request a letter of recommendation and to you know strategize about who else is going to write the best and most thoughtful letters of recommendation on your behalf. Throughout the fall, you'll be proofreading and finalizing your essays. And don't be afraid to ask other people to look at it. I know it can be a very stressful process because it's so personal. And I didn't show my essay to anyone in my family or at my school because I was nervous about them receiving who I was and receiving my writing. But if you do have someone in your life who you feel like you can trust with this writing, it's always helpful to get that second pair of eyes on it. It's always helpful to understand if when they read it, they see you reflected in it and whether you're really telling your story because the people who are closest to you are the people who can tell you if that's true. And um, make sure you're getting, of course, um, any required tests out of the way, all of your documents should, you know, be together by this point, start talking to your families, if you're applying for financial aid, about uh, filling out those forms when it comes time, and so on. Um, so make sure you research all of the deadlines to the schools that you're applying to, so you don't miss out on financial aid as well. Um, the FAFSA will be due, you know, for our regular decision students by February 15th, around then. Um, so make sure that you're checking for every school those deadlines, whether it's the CSS profile, the FAFSA, any institutional scholarship um, applications that you need to fill out, all of that is really important. And then make sure in the spring, once you get accepted to a school, which I know you all will, that you are keeping up your studies in the meantime. You've still got to make it to the finish line. You've still got to make it to May. Um, so we can still see that you're putting in that academic work when we receive your final transcript. And of course, in terms of financial aid, let's talk about what you need to do in order to apply for financial aid at NYU. But before we dive in, I just want to share a short video, final video, uh, that will walk you through the financial aid process. Ensuring that our students are able to afford their college education is a top priority at NYU. And one of the best ways to make sure that becomes a reality for you is to apply for financial aid. At NYU, there are two possible forms that may be required when applying for financial aid. Which ones you'll need to submit depends on your citizenship status and which of our three campuses you're applying to. We do ask on the common application whether or not you intend to apply for financial aid. Checking this box will help us keep you informed about requirements and upcoming deadlines. The first form, which we require from just about everyone, is the CSS profile. This provides the university with a personalized view of your financial circumstances. To complete the CSS profile, you'll want to sit down with your parents or guardians and collect all of your tax documents, bank statements, and records of investments. If you have a US-issued social security number, you'll need to provide that too. You'll also need to answer some questions about your family's income, assets, and expenses. The other form, which is required for U.S. citizens, permanent residents, and other eligible non-citizens, is the Free Application for Federal Student Aid, or FAFSA. The FAFSA requires much of the same information as the CSS profile, but unlike the CSS profile, which is submitted to NYU through the College Board, the FAFSA is submitted to the U.S. Department of Education, and they calculate your family's Expected Family Contribution, or EFC. Your EFC is sent to the universities you choose to be used as a component in your financial aid calculation. In some cases, there are other forms you may need to submit, so be sure to check the financial aid website for information about your specific situation. For your financial aid application to be considered, it is critical that you meet our deadlines. When we have your completed application for financial aid, we take the data you provided and calculate your financial aid eligibility. A small percentage of students may be asked to provide additional documentation to verify their information. If you're selected for verification, it's no cause for alarm. We'll alert you about next steps by email, including when and where to submit your verification documents, and it should be easy to complete. Once you're admitted to NYU, you'll receive a detailed explanation of your financial aid package. You'll see the amount of aid you should expect, 
and the estimated amount that your family will still have to pay. We know that's a lot of information, but here are the key points. The deadlines are critical. Make sure you know which ones you need to meet. Your citizenship status and the campus you're applying to will determine the forms you need to complete. We'll contact you by email if we need any additional information. So keep an eye on the email address you provide in case there are urgent requirements. And we're always here to help. Feel free to contact us at any time throughout the process, the earlier the better, with any questions you may have. All right, so hopefully that guide is a helpful starting point when it comes to what is required to apply for financial aid. Many schools, including NYU, are gonna require the documents that they just talked about that are listed here. So the CSS profile, which anyone can fill out regardless of citizenship, including international and undocumented students to be eligible for scholarships from NYU directly. We also have an undocumented student financial aid application that you can find on our website if you do not hold US citizenship or permanent residency. There's also the FAFSA, the free application for federal student aid, which should be filled out by students who are citizens or permanent residents of the US, which makes you eligible for federal aid loans, at federal aid and loans, sorry. And then finally, make sure to research other scholarship applications. There are so many opportunities out there for funding. There is even, I believe, a scholarship for women over a particular height. Um, there are so many different ways to find um, organizations that want to contribute to your education. And CapEx, FastWeb, and other sites are really helpful search engines that aggregate a lot of those. Some scholarships are larger, like the Coca-Cola Scholars, but you can also get lots of small scholarships through uh, ways like Raise Me to find ways to help pay for your education. And more than anything, and I can't stress this enough, whether it's a financial aid application or an application itself, it's very important critical even, to remember to submit everything on time to be eligible for admission and for that financial aid. Different schools do have different timelines, so make sure to do your research. At NYU, we have Early Decision 1, Early Decision 2, and Regular Decision. Early decision applications are binding, um, so if you are accepted, we're expecting you're coming that following fall. And financial aid deadlines are usually about two weeks after the main deadline for early decision and six weeks for regular decision. But it helps, I think, to get everything in at the same time. And at NYU, we want you to have all of the information you need right up front. So you'll receive your financial aid package when you receive your admissions decision. So you'll have all the information you need to be able to make that decision about where you'll attend college. So now if we have a couple of moments, we have a chance to take some questions from the Q&A box, if any are there. Um, it looks like my colleagues have been doing an amazing job of getting through all of your questions. Um, but I do see a question from Bridget about what happens about applying ED1 elsewhere and applying ED2 at NYU. That's something that you can do as long as you don't have two early decision applications active at the same time, right? So um, to submit another early decision two application, if you've already submitted an early decision one application elsewhere would technically be a breach of that agreement. Um, so just make sure that you are only submitting one early decision application at a time. And then I see um, Rafi asked, uh, could you repeat some of the scholarship websites? The ones that I know of are CapEx, so C-A-P-P-E-X, and FastWeb. F-A-S-T-W-E-B, and I apologize if my Australian accent <laughs> interrupted you getting any of those, um, but those are really helpful to kind of aggregate some of those uh, external scholarships that you might apply for. All right, so I know we are pretty